Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Chris Natha DeRocher. I am your hostess today for this What's Going On segment. And I am so excited because we have an incredible guest with us this evening. And so as you join us, say hello in the chat. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. We have the amazing Dr. LaDonna Marie. She is an author, a pastor, a speaker, a life coach, and so much more. And we're going to be learning about the incredible work that she does. And so, guys, please help me welcome Dr. LaDonna. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Thank you. And thank you so much for that awesome just introductory. Um, you know, every time I hear those things, I'm like, yeah, uh, that that's me. And, you know, that's what God put me on this earth to do. So thank you so much again for just having me here to talk to you and the audience. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Um, I'm excited um, just to talk more about you, um, to you, about you, the incredible work that you do. Um, you do so many things. However, <laughs> one of the incredible themes that I've been able to see in all of those things is your love for other people. And I think it's so beautiful that um, you truly have a heart for others. And so can you recall, if possible, when you became passionate about uplifting others, impacting their lives and truly being a blessing um, in their lives. Can you recall even when that started for you? Uh, so that started for me really as a young, uh, young, young teenager, as a young kid. Um, I've always loved to like uplift someone or, you know, empower them. Back then I didn't have those words, but it was always just to, you know, cheer them up. You know, that was like the teenage thing. Um, I love to offer words of kindness and encouragement for whatever people were going through. Um, you know, I myself, my beginning story is I attempted to commit suicide at the age of 14. And so there were some low points in my life. There were some times where I felt like I just really didn't want to be here. And so, you know, once God showed me the true meaning of my life, the true meaning that he had, you know, purpose me for on this earth, then I began to take a different viewpoint. So it was no longer me going through like the mundane things, teenage things, you know, you know, things that you go through just in life, seeing it that this is the end all be all. So once I was able to have, you know, a different perspective and I was able to look at things and see the positive, not only the negative or what I was going through, um, God implanted into me that, I would do that for other people. Like he, he basically told me as a teenager that as I heal you, the words that you write for me and the things that you, you, I have assigned you to do for me will encourage and help others to heal on their journey. And so I've, I've lived this life out, you know, as a teenager, writing poems to help my classmates, um, always being the one to pep up everyone or encourage them. Um, even sometimes when I was hurting or I didn't have the words to look at my own um, issues, but I always wanted to make sure that I was able to step in. And so for me, it just carried on. So as I began to heal, as I began to write, as I began to go out and speak or be places just, you know, encouraging others, it just was a theme for my life to um pour into others and to help them to know that, you know, wherever you may be, um, it's not the end of the road. Like there, there's another day. Like if you wake up tomorrow, that means that you have another chance to, you know, be great at whatever you're doing or to find that thing that will make your life content. And so that's just been a the theme um, for my life to empower, to encourage, to uplift. Um, I used to say all the time in the very early beginning is that I aspire to inspire others because I set out my day um, knowing that only if I could breathe that that today is a good day, because if I didn't have breath, then I wouldn't be on the earth. And so I didn't need a, a lot of things to to make me content or to make me happy or to have me in a joyful mood. I just needed to know that I had 
time and space and access to get to the next thing. And that's what I want to help so many people who hide behind the, the, the you know, they suffer in silence or they smile, but they're not really happy. And so I could be able to, to look into others' eyes and can see the pain that they may have been going through. And with everything that I overcame and everything that I achieved, I wanted them to have that same, same, same growth. That's so beautiful. I know that you um, mentioned having going through a really tough time in your teenage years. How does someone who is really struggling with maybe even thinking the, maybe they don't have any purpose at all or they're very fixated on a hardship or going through a tough time? How do they go from there to shifting their perspective and beginning to see themselves the way God sees them? And so first thing first, I always hashtag God first. And that's that's the way, you know, that relationship that you build with him, when you begin to see yourself from his perspective as a child of God, um, that he loved you to give his only begotten son so that we could live on this earth so that, you know, we could live life and have it more abundantly. As my relationship grew, grew with God, I began to not just see from my point of view, but from his point of view. And so to anyone who's going out there that are believers, um, that are searching for, you know, who they are and their identity, your identity belongs and starts with God and with Christ. And so knowing, you know, um, who you are in him, um, knowing that he created you for a purpose. The Bible says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, like I knew you and I purposed you. And even mm -hmm. though in that scripture, he was talking to Jeremiah as a prophet, but whatever your purpose is to be a writer, to be an actor, to be a awesome mom, you know, whatever that is, he purposed you. So he knew himself in you. And that's the reason why you exist. And so once a person gets that in their mind to know, no matter what's going on right now with me, that I was born with a purpose. And when I find that purpose, I can be able to flourish in, you know, what I have to do on this earth. And so to many people that are out there, I just want them to know that their identity is not in what they have. It's not in what, you know, in, in material things, but it is knowing who you are in Christ as a child of God. And that's one of the things that I've always had in my life. And that's the reason why I felt very misunderstood, because um, I exemplified a lot of the, the qualities, you know, of the fruit of the spirit, which now I know are the fruit of the spirit, the kindness and the joy and the peace and the patience and self-control. Like I, I had all those things before I could go to the Bible and know the book, chapter, verse. And so it, it seemed odd for me because everybody else was living as, you know, living and, and, and being different. And here I was this way. But I learned that, you know, as you read in the Bible, you know, we're set apart. Um, you know, we're a peculiar person. Um, and so I knew that God had made me for a purpose. And so to anyone who's out there who's struggling, I would say, look inside of yourself and just see those positive things, you know, start to make a list of all of the things that you do great and you do good or those things that come natural to you and then begin to see yourself through the eyes of God. Oh, wow. That is so powerful. Thank you so much for that. Um, that even encouraged me. I'm sitting here and you were just um, feeding my spirit. So thank you <laughs> for that. You're welcome. You're oh, so welcome. You so um, if you could tell us about planting positive seeds what that is what's the work that you do there and um yeah we'd love to know more about it awesome so planting positive seed is my uh, nonprofit where i help women and girls to you know overcome obstacles through outreach and uh, a lot of different initiatives that uh were founded in 2013 that's when i started uh the conference um with a nonprofit. Uh, god had said to me that you know he wanted me to do what to plant positive seeds in the lives of others, just like he planted those seeds in my life. And so those seeds of telling me who I was and those seeds of encouraging me to be the best version of myself, um, those were things that he wanted me to now 
go duplicate in the world. And so I do that for women and girls because that's uh, the people that I connect with the most. I don't, you know, turn away men or young boys who come to the conferences or the retreats or the summits. But, you know, I was a young teenager, you know, I was a young lady. Now, you know, I'm an adult. And so I love working with um, the, the teens and to help them to come out of areas of limited thinking and even some self-sabotage, you know, and to promote emotional wellness. Because sometimes you can uh, be doing everything right but the, that if you overcome with emotions and, you know, not being able to actually feel or, you know, be all the way present with what you're doing, sometimes it can hinder your progress. And so with planting positive seeds, just in the beginning, um, I did community uh, locally and globally outreach. And that was helping with self-care kits, you know, helping maybe with toiletries, you know, different things that uh, young girls would need. We also branched off when COVID happened in 2020 to help out the nursing home, um, uh, persons and men and women in the nursing homes who families couldn't get to see them. Uh, my nonprofit uh, did about 40 something bags for everybody was there that helped them just with like little love items, you know, socks and toothbrushes and things that they could use um, just to let them know that someone cared. Um, we've even reached over to Africa. I, I went to Africa in 2019 and also in 2023, but I um, networked with Apostle Kim and her husband, Louis Jones, and network with them uh, to help some of the girls over there in Africa. You know, Planet Positive Seas did a monetary donation because at that time we couldn't ship things. So we did a monetary donation that they were able to buy the self-care products that they needed and also to supply some uniforms for some of the young girls who needed it over there. Uh, we also do conferences. So in November, uh, we would do uh, conferences. I've had about three of them. Planet Positive Seeds did a Youth for Christ conference in 2013, the very first year we started. Then we moved on to 2015. Then 2018, we did another one. Then God moved us into summits and also um, uh, retreats to help the young girls. So I started pulling in the young girls to do like the retreats and hands-on to teach them life skills and just to encourage them to be the best version of themselves, to have those conversations. I wrote a book about uh, a, a book called Things I Wish I Knew, Letters to My my Little Sisters. And so even in that book, I had, you know, different things that we talked to the young girls about that you know, we as adults didn't have, you know, people talking to us about when we were younger. Um, I also did one. I have a book also, um, another uh, workbook uh, for the young girls. And we did those. We broke it off into five different uh, parts of just helping them to empower them, to love them, to heal them, um, just to know themselves and just help them to get those resiliency skills that they need to continue to heal, uh, regroup, know how to have, you know, what resources are around you. And so I brought in people who could speak to each part of those to just pour into their lives. Um, Plenty of Positive Seeds, are, later on, we added on a uh, toy drive component where for three Christmases, we were able to give toys to low income and no income parents. And so that was a very near and dear um, uh, uh, just initiative for me because at one time I was one of those parents who, you know, couldn't afford gifts for my children. And in the year of 2015, I, you know, they, they, I lost my job because my job was downsizing. It wasn't anything that I did personally, but just that year I ended up losing it. So learning how to maneuver my life from going from having a full salary to partial, you know, there were some things that I just had to try to work myself around, but there were some very important people in my life who poured into me and who helped me to be able to for my kids to have smiles on their faces. And so I wanted to do the same. I wanted to pour into the community, into women um, who wanted to give gifts or even clothing. It, it just didn't have to be gifts, but whatever they saw as a need, we did wish lists. And if we could provide those things on the wish list, we did. If we could not, we would also give, you know, gift cards for the parents to go and purchase those things that they wanted uh, for their young girls. And another component of it is um, also 
um, the suicide prevention and awareness. So just talking to, you know, the young girls and to women uh, who may feel like they, you know, don't want to be here. It's a very important part to mental, mental health and being a mental health advocate for me um, is very important because I want to empower them to know that, you know, there are some ways around, you know, uh, limited thinking or just like I said before, just to think that this is the end all be all. So Planet Positive Seed has been just a ministry, a love of mine. I love giving back. I love pouring into others. Um, you know, I love just being a community advocate and a resource. And so those are some of the things, um, some of the things I may have omitted to uh, um, say. You can find them on my website, which is uh, www.plantingpositiveseeds.com. And so there I try to update and let everybody know if you donate to Planting Positive Seeds, I'm going to show you where your money is going and the things that we're doing. And so I really love um just being able to be a, a outreach and, um, and connection for those who may be in an impasse and they just need that extra boost to keep them going. That is incredible. Just uh, what you've uh, shared with us today, just the work um, that um, Planting Positive Seeds is doing and that you are not just empowered, but that you're taking that same empowerment and you're giving it right back to women to girls whoever needs it which is so beautiful and i think about where you were back um in your teenage years and if you didn't press forward if god didn't you know get a hold of your life then all these other people who are now attached who you've been able to bless they would yes. not have been dressed in this way and so we thank god for being so strategic about yeah. our lives and how he's using you and the work that you're doing just to be such a light in the world so again thank, thank you because that's what we need more of so thank you so much for that you're welcome um can you tell us a little bit about um there's um some incredible awards that you um received as well as some amazing achievement um i know you were featured on the word network of uh, last year um also um, you were awarded and um, author of the year, um, as well as empowered diva of the year. Um, you is, are an author of the year. Tell us about all the incredible accolades that you've been able to have. And I just want um, everyone watching to be encouraged because when you truly put God first and you do his work and that you are strategic and not only strategic, but that you are purposeful, that so many doors can truly be open for you and you have the ability to um, just uh, bless so many other lives, right? Just by being obedient to his calling on our lives. So you can just tell us a little bit more about that. Oh my goodness, you said that so great. And that's what I tell many people um, when, when just, this is an obedience walk. This is, um, yes, Lord, I'll do what you ask me to do because even when I was sitting in my room at the age of 14, when my poetry went from writing in journals, maybe when I was 12 to um, I first start writing poetry at the age of 14, um, he was just like, yeah, I'm you when you as you're writing this, it's going to help me to heal other people like the the foundation of what I'm doing in your life is going to make impact for other people. And so even then, as a 14 year old, I wanted to make impact. It had nothing about winning awards. It was nothing about, you know, being in the limelight because I did not want to be. The Lord knew where he found me. I was sitting in my room. I tell people just like the song said, uh, I think it was Brandy that wrote the song back in the day. I'm sitting up in my room. I was writing with a pen and a pad. And that's what that was my happy place because there I found for all of the thoughts that he downloaded to me that I could get out and I could express what he wanted me. And I yielded uh, as, as he gave me words to write, I yielded. And so all of the awards, um, all of the, the, the accolades, all of the, you know, prestigious and presidential and, and being on the word network and, um, you know, just making Mississippi great and, Everything that I've been able to accomplish, I give it all to God because I keep him first. And that's the that's 
what I've always said. And that's even what some people will come back and say that, you know, God is blessing you because you always put him first. And I was like, yes, because I'm never going to forget because without him, I could not be here to do this without his him showing me the trajectory of my life and showing me where I was going because he predestined me to be there, then I wouldn't be able to do it. And so every award that I get, being on the Word Network, I'm telling you, I was on the Word Network. I pray to God as I always do before I get on this interview and anyone, I say, God, please bring the people who need what you've given me to give so that I can give them what you want them to know so they can be in this place and this space to hear something that would encourage them to their next. Even in my bio, I say to help them to leap into their greatness because what he does for me he can do for another. The Bible says he has no respect of person. And so, like you said, being motivated to honor him, to follow him. And so every award that I get, I'm so humbled. I'm so humbled because sometimes I be wanting to hide in the background and God be pushing me forward. <laughs> you know, he pushes me forward. He'll find and send people to find me because he knows that I have his heart. You know, it's been from the beginning. I never want a person to feel like, you know, this is the end all. So every book that I write, you know, it it, it centers around the healing. It centers around uh, restoration. It centers around the resilience that you need. It centers around meeting you where you are, meaning that you don't have to change anything about you for God to come and sit with you or for God to, to be with you because the Bible says that he'll never leave you or forsake you. So even in wherever you are, the Bible says wherever you make your bed, that he's there with you. And so I want people to be able to see the gradual growth of what you can do and what you can accomplish when you continue to keep him first. And so even uh, like the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award, I said, God, thank you. Because, you know, out here, I never do this for awards, but I've been in this, in this, you know, just been writing. I, I say I've been writing it, you know, 26 years of my life. I started at 14. I've been writing, but for 16 years, I've been an author. I've been a co-author. I started in 2008, and then 2010 is when I did my first self-published book. And so I've been doing whatever God asked me to do. I don't write. I don't force myself to do anything, but I I, I order him. I, I mean, I follow him. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man is ordered. And so I allow him to order my steps. I allow him to, to navigate me to what it is that he wants me to do. So I'm, I'm humbled. Every award, I'm humbled. Um, every time my name is called, I, I give, give God his glory and I thank him. I thank God for the giver of the gift because these awards put me in places where people can see that if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Then no matter what you're going through, God is going to be there with you. You have to, you know, choose him and put him first and allow him to lead you. And so um, on this journey with him, he's taken me, you know, it's international. Before I even got international, I was winning awards in Paris in 2014. And then I told the Lord, I said, well, the next time I win an award, you know, out of the country, I want to go out of the country. And I was nominated for something in 2018. And I said, you know what? I've been nominated. So even if I don't know if I'm going to win or not, I'm going to go. I went to London that year and I ended up winning author of the year, international author of the year in, in wow. London. And um, one of my friends, his name is Luke from London. He, he was a photographer. He took a picture of me and that was one of the pictures that I used on the cover of the journey, the path, because in that moment, I was giving God glory as I walked to the yeah. stage. I was thanking him for keeping me focused. I was thanking him for not allowing me to get distracted and, and, and not allow it, you know me to make it about me. But as mm -hmm. I win these awards, that I help people to understand that what God on your side, that all things are possible. Um, so I'm very, very grateful for every award. Even last year when I won the impactful journal of the year, that was my, the last book that I've written um, was my gratitude journal. And I tell people anytime I do something, um, when I wrote this book, I actually did it for myself. I, I had, a, I just bought a journal out of Dollar Tree, started writing in it. I started, you know, 
full overflowing with the gratitude, thinking about the good things that God had done for me. I came up, he came up with the titles. And so I just began to see the goodness of God every time I read something. And then the miracle signs and wonders started. And then, you know, random acts of kindness started happening. And so, you know, what he did for me in even writing this and then being able to win, um, you know, the impactful journal of 2023 at the Inspire You Awards. I was just amazed because I was like, God, I was being obedient. <laughs> I love it. I love so it. Grateful. Yes. You take one step then God opens another door and you take another step and he opens another door. And so yes. it's just beautiful just to see how we just got to trust him, trust him. He will absolutely blow our minds. Patrice, thank you so much for the love. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> um, Patrice says we look radiant. Thank you, Patrice. We appreciate you. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. But yes, it's just so incredible what God can do. Yes. Like it can surpass our imagination. So thank you so much for that. And um, thank you for just encouraging us and speaking life into us. And goes to show us that God ha truly has a plan for our lives. And yes. we can all start where we are with what we have yes. and be available and open to him and his plan for us. Uh, so thank you again for just sharing that with us it was so encouraging and if you could just tell us again how can we stay connected with you because um, we'd love to do so okay well you can stay connected with me via my website which is uh, www.ladonamarie.org you can sign on um, and get the updates you can go over to my website also i have my book page on uh, my business page on facebook which is ladonna marie books and so if you go over to facebook and you find ladonna marie books and just stay connected there um i'm on instagram under i am uh, ladonna marie underscore and so you can connect with me i'm always sharing and trying to update you know those who follow me and those who um, you know need that encouragement and empowerment um, to follow and and connect uh, with me? And so, if you go to my website and you uh, connect there or follow me on one of the social media network, I promise you, if you type in Ladonna Marie, you're gonna see my face smiling somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Dr. LaDonna Marie. It has been such a pleasure. Continue to just shine bright for the kingdom. It is beautiful to see. And thank you for sitting down with us today. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. And God bless each and every one of you all. Awesome. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you for tuning in. And we will see you again very soon. Um, until then, be well. Take care, everyone.